Good morning. Right now we have Jeremy, who's about to talk to us about patchworking. Um, and he's happy to take questions throughout the talk, so if you would like to ask something, just put up your hand and I'll come and give you the microphone so all of the streaming can be heard and everything like that. Thank you, Jeremy. So, um, my phone's working. Uh, my name's Jeremy Kerr. I, uh, I currently work for Canonical, but this is a, an own time project for me. I actually started it a while ago uh, when I was working for Auslabs at, uh, at IBM. Uh, one of the, um, I guess, the defining properties of, of open source software development is that we work in a group, and we often work in, in fairly distributed groups. And this, this is how it generally works. We have a maintainer of a project. We have uh, a few contributors. And they generally collaborate over a mailing list to, uh, to submit, submit our units of work, which is a patch, to a contributor. And the maintainer has a couple of roles in this, this sort of relationship to primarily review the patch or review the contributions that we're getting from people, apply them to their, their repository and apply them to the, the work that they're doing, and then make a release at some point. Now, the last two of those things are, are fairly straightforward and they're fairly routine and, and and not to say they're trivial, but it's a, it's a fairly programmatic sort of thing, set of things to do. The main thing we want the reviewers or the, the uh, maintainers to do is to review the patches to make sure that they're, they're spot on, they do what the maintainer wants, they don't have any bugs, or they don't have any bugs we can see. Uh, so the core of, of what we want the maintainer to be spending their time on is, is doing the patch review. So uh, that's, sort of, that's achievable in, in this sort of situation where you have you know, maybe three contributors sending you patches. But then it can get a bit more complex when you have more contributors. And especially when your contributors start uh, doing things like this, asking you questions about, is my patch in yet? You're basically turning, doing less of the review, review part and more of the maintaining a group of people and, and taking away from you sort of your core role as a project maintainer. And then you get stuff like this sort of, this sort of thing happening. I was actually looking for a good example of, of maintainership kind of falling by the wayside at, at, at some point. And this is while I was preparing my slides for this talk. And I was watching the, I, the hash kernel IRC channel with Elvira here, asking about a function that uh, he didn't understand. And apparently, it went through his own, own review path. We're gonna, Al, Elvira is a, a very busy guy, so he's got a lot to do. Understandably, a few things go past. The goal of patchwork is to, to stop that from happening, to make, to focus the maintainer on just the patch review, rather than the extraneous kind of uh, I guess, non-review work. So I'll, I'll be doing a few demos of patchwork in this, this talk, um, assuming a, a kind of a fairly simple model of patch review at the, um, during the demo itself. So first on the left, we have a, a patch that no one's ever seen yet. It hasn't even left the, uh, the contributor's machine. They send it out. It becomes a new patch. Uh, then someone reviews it, and from that state, it can go to either accepted or rejected. So that's our, our general sort of simple model for this talk of, of the patch review process. With that in mind, we'll uh, go through some, some patchwork basics. Now, those of you who use patchwork uh, regularly, uh, this may be a bit trivial, but I thought I'd sort of cover on, on what, we, what we're going to start with for the rest of the talk. So patchwork is web-based, so I'm going to show you this in a web browser. And uh, Patchwork is also based on projects. So for this talk, I've set up a sample project called the Linux Conf AU demo. And it's just a little Hello World program. That's, we're sort of maintaining a project here with one file and it doesn't do much. In fact, you might be able to see one bug in our Hello World program there, which we'll hopefully get a patch for from one of our contributors. So uh, we have our Linux Conf AU demo project here. We can see some info about that project, um, uh, how many patches are in there, who the maintainers are, and that sort of thing. Uh, this, this page is kind of, it's just little, little information. It's not used much in the, the general daily use of Patchwork. So as you can see, I'm a uh, maintainer of this project. So it sort of helps if I log in. Patchwork knows that I'm a maintainer, and if I log in with my account, I get this, this sort of user profile page. It has some information about my status and patchwork and that sort of thing. 
We won't worry about them too much now. But more importantly, it's got a link to the, the project page. So this is the list of patches that are currently pending for my, my new Hello World project. As you can see, there's no patches there. Uh, and this is our, our happy state of maintainership. We don't have any patches here. Everything's cool. Well, it may be not happy state, but uh, we don't have any work to do at the moment. So, um, Mikey, if I can get you to send me some patches for this project. Um, what I'll do, Mikey just sent me some, um, uh, some patches for my, my upcoming Hello World project here. Actually, let's get rid of this one. And this is just my mail client. As you can see, I'm subscribed to the, um, the, the mailing list of this project as you would be for, for most other open source projects. And I have a set of patches here from Mikey. Um, four patches, one with a comment. Uh, fairly kind of, you'd be used to this, this whole main, or like the whole mailing list, this concept for a project. Now, Patchwork is also, where are you going? Patchwork is also subscribed to this mailing list, and it will see the patches that have come in. So if we refresh this page, we now have a set of patches that have come in on the mailing list that I have to do something about as the maintainer. So um, these, as, as Patchwork has received every mail from the mailing list, it's, it's found the ones that look like patches. As you can see over here, we have five mails that have come through. Patchwork has four, has found patches in four of them, has sort of add them, added them to our, our list of, of stuff to do. Um, and by default, the order of those will come in as uh, newest at the top. So patch four or four were sent last, so it's at the top. We can change that around for the standard sorts of um, you know, ordering and lists and that sort of thing, as you see in, in web pages. So we'll go into our, our first patch here. And this one, uh, sent by Mikey, uh, has, has basically some general details about the patch here at the top of the page. If we scroll down a bit, we can see the patch itself and the comments that Mikey sent with that patch. Now, it's a, it's a fairly... Uh, fairly uncom uncontroversial sort of change. So I, this is where I do my review here. I can look at it, looks all right. Let's apply it to the, um, the project. Now I can do that by downloading this, um, the actual DM box of the patch we saw here. And that's, I'll just shift that over a bit. Anyway, that's the, uh, the patch itself, slightly off screen. As you can see, it looks like a, a mail which a lot of um, uh, a lot of uh, revision control tools are set up to, to process. So we can actually feed this patch straight into the, the patch program, and that'll just uh, apply it to our project. We can also feed it into the git am, or short for apply inbox, and that'll import it straight into the, the revision control system and apply it to the project. So this format here allows us to take the patch, use it, apply it into our tree, and then uh, and, you know, a fairly simple process. Now, what we can do to make our lives easier is, is mark that patch as accepted. So we just do that for the drop-down box here. That's all of the states that are possible for a patch. Um, we're just going to deal with the, those top four at the moment. So we mark it as accepted, update the patch, and as we can see, the state has changed to accepted. Now, if we go back to our list, list of patches to this project, we can see that that patch is now gone. Uh, it's not gone permanently, it's only been hidden from the default view. And that default view is set up to show us the things that we need to look at as a maintainer. We actually get it back by just changing that, the filters around a bit. We can see that patch is now there in its, uh, in its new state. But we'll, um, we'll go back and use that default filter to see what to do next. Now if we sort of continue on our task, we see this patch two of four here. Now this is another one from Mikey. Um, fixing the main bug in our Hello World program, make it actually print Hello World. Um, and this one's actually also got a comment on it. Now, as you can see with our mail here, this patch got a reply from Ben. Um, and he, he thinks it's all right, so that's good. Um, and that comment, it was in a separate mail, and it's appeared on the same page to that patch in Patchwork. So Patchwork is grouped. Any, any review, any comments on that patch into that same page. So as the maintainer, I only have to look at one place to see all the comments and everything on that patch. Also, you can see that um, Ben has added his ActBuy 
to that patch, which is, if you're not familiar with sort of the the, the kernel way of doing things, um, you can add these little tags to a to a comment, and they say, yeah, I approve this patch. That's cool. And then when you commit that patch, or when me as the maintainer commits that patch, I'll generally take that act by, paste it into the change log so that everyone can see that Ben has act that patch, and that's all cool. Now, one of the handy things about that is um, if I now look at this, the inbox for this patch, I can see that Patchwork has actually collected that act by into the, the patch itself. So that sort of reduces one of the steps that I need to do as a maintainer is looking through other bits of mail, trying to find these acts and comments and that sort of thing. Patchwork will automatically put them into one single bundle that I can just apply, or one single unit that I can apply to a, um, to a, a revision control system. Mikey, do you want to just wait for the... What are the list of things that it will actually pick up for that? So at the moment, it does. Um, it'll find in any comments, it'll find signed off by lines, it'll find act by lines. I think it has a knacked by filter as well. Um, I don't think anyone's ever used that. Um, and tested by and reviewed by as well. So if anyone's commented on a patch with those particular tags, we say, they automatically get imported into um, into the comments for that patch. Cool, and now we'll um, we'll apply that one, so it's accepted, and then get back to the list. Now that's been a sort of a, a pretty uh, single step-by-step -step process at the moment. If I if I applied those patches some other way, if I grabbed them out of the mailbox, applied them, and I know they're all good, I can just do that, select all the patches, say they're accepted, and go. So I can do it either through the patch page itself one at a time, or I can do the whole lot with just that a fairly simple process. Now I'm back to my, my zen state of, of maintainership. Um, I have no patches to process at all. Um, my work is done, and I can just concentrate on reviewing. So yeah, just a quick question. Um, would it be possible to add a, uh, another filter to check for a thank you merged or uh, some other tag to automate the, uh, the exceptions? I'll go over that in a little bit. Yep. So, that, that's the basic of Patchwork, and sort of in an overview from the demo, Patchwork is subscribed to the mailing list. It parses the patches that are coming in. It looks for anything that looks like a patch, adds that to the system. Me as the maintainer, I go through. I can see what patches are remaining. I apply them or I don't apply them, update the state, say accepted, rejected, or maybe superseded, or you know, RFC only, that sort of thing. And then I, um, that allows me to sort of track the flow of a patch through the system. Now, maybe a, a few problems we've, we've sort of, oh, sorry, a few, a few solutions that we've solved here. We don't have any more drop patches. I don't need to worry about if I've missed a patch on the mailing list because patchwork is keeping control of all the, the bits of work that I need to do. And also importantly, the contributors can see what are happening to their patches. They don't need to keep asking me, have you applied my patch yet? Is it in your tree? What did you think? It, maybe in some cases, if I've rejected the patch, nothing happens. You know, no one gets notified of that. With Patchwork, they can see exactly what's happening with a patch at the moment. Only one downside is we've kind of introduced extra work for the maintainer. They need to go through and, and update patch, Patchwork with, with what they're doing. And that's a step they didn't have to do before. So the goal of Patchwork is to make it easier for the maintainer, make it so the maintainer can concentrate on just the review part of their job. But we've actually introduced an extra step here. So we want to see what else we can do to to, to make it easier for the maintainer to do their job. Now, what I'll do is I'll just um, give us all those patches back, change them all to new, and pretend that nothing happened before. So I have this new set of patches. Um, I've seen them all on the mailing list. I know Mikey's a good committer, so, oh, sorry, good contributor. He's nodding his head. So that, um, I can trust Mikey with, with what he sends, or I've re reviewed those patches somewhere else. What I can do is select all the patches and create what's called a bundle. And we give that bundle a name. And the status here says that I've um, created a bundle and with those patches in it. So if I look at my bundles now on, on the patchwork GUI, um, I can see I have one bundle called an incoming. Uh, it has a project assigned to it. so. 
each bundle is for a specific project. I can't combine patches from two different projects in one bundle. It sort of doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, so we'll have a look at that, um, that bundle in a moment. Now, bundles are also per user. So as a, as a maintainer of patch, we've just got a question down here. Can I grab the microphone? Nope, OK. Go ahead. The question was, wouldn't it make sense to do it across projects uh, if the projects are related somehow, um, like a library and a, and a, a client of that library? Um, I haven't really had any requests for that at the moment. Um, it makes the database a lot simpler at the moment, just having to for one project. Uh, and generally, the bundle is something you would apply to one project sort of at once, um, where if you had separate mailing lists for those things, it's generally not the same kind of code base. So you wouldn't want to commit that to the, to the one, commit that set of patches to one thing. Um, it, it's, in theory, possible. I just haven't had any sort of uh, calls for that to happen yet. Um, so if we um, go into that bundle, we can see all the patches that I've added to that bundle. Um, and that, this becomes my sort of unit of work. And as before, it's same sort of list, same sort of filters, everything like that. But now I can download the entire bundle as an inbox file. So what I'll do is I'll just... Um, Save that to my project directory. And if I just go to my project and git am, actually, Can you change your patches again, Mikey? Nope, for some reason, my patches aren't applying. Anyway, with that bundle, I can now um, apply them into, uh, uh, take those patches. Actually, what I probably need to do, one thing we can do with the bundles, this is a good uh, live demo making things work. Uh, Situation. So with the bundles, uh, as you can see, they're actually out of order. Um, the patches in this list are out of order. First, it's three or four, four or four, one or four, two or four. Um, uh, the patches in the bundle have are going to be applied in the order that they appear. So what we're going to do, and what caused that that merge failure before, is that the patches one patch required another one. So what we can do is actually change the order of these patches here. Um, we'll put one at the top. Two seconds, three, four, and then save that new order. So now we've reordered our bundle. The bundle stays the same, the patches all stay the same, but we just tweak the order to make those patches work again. Now, if we now download that same, uh, overwrite the old one. Now we've applied, we've just done a git am, standard git command to apply all the patches in that, um, in, in the bundle that Mikey sent and they appear in our git history straight away. So using just the git am command, the inbox that Patchworks uh, exports for that bundle, we can automatically take all of Mikey's patches that we know are good, apply them to our revision control system in, in just one step, which makes my job a lot easier. Um, one other thing with bundles, what we can do here is um, tick the public box and update the bundle. Now, what that means is our bundle now has a public link. Um, and I can say share that, that, that link with other people. You don't need to be logged into Patchwork to view that link. Now that means that if I, if I need to, you know, I can share the review with other people. If I need a hand with a review, maybe there's some patch in there or the whole series that, that I don't maybe understand the workings of, I can put that bundle online somewhere and then uh, other people can look at it, review, make comments, and that sort of thing. So just a um, bit of a overview of the bundle situation. Uh, basically, the bundles allow us to collect patches in one set, uh, update everything at once. Actually, let's do that now. Um, we've got our bundle. We've applied all of those, those patches to our, uh, our project. So again, select all, accepted, and done. Uh, so if we go back to the patch list, 
We can say there's no patches left because all the patches are now accepted. And it's kind of allowed us to, to combine all our work into, into a single interaction with patchwork rather than little steps. So back to the presentation. Um, and with those public bundles, we can, we can share that, the review process. Now, speaking of, um, of sharing, we can also delegate patches to, um, to people who, who know things. So Mikey, if you could send me uh, another set of patches. Again, in my email client. I can see that uh, Mikey has sent me some new patches because I'm subscribed, subscribed to the mailing list. These ones add some internationalization to our Hello World program. Uh, if I refresh my list, I can see these new patches have, have, applied, have, have appeared. Now I can look at this one. Looks good to me. Add some standard libintool stuff to my, um, to my program. Now this one here adds the German translation for Hello World to the, the, the language uh, locale file. Now, I, as a maintainer, I could, um, I could uh, accept this patch, but uh, the problem is my, my German's pretty, uh, as they say, scheisse. Um, so what I'm going to do here is actually delegate to my friend Leon, who speaks German. Um, and he will probably have a lot of, a better idea about um, about whether or not uh, this patch is correct or not. So if we go back to the patch list, we can see that patch two or two there has um, has a, a delegate on that list. Now what I'm going to do is pretend I'm Leon for a second and uh, log in as him. Now this is my again my user profile page. Now the important bit here is that my it says that my to-do list contains one patch. Um, also, in this top corner, we have this little link here which says to-do with one patch in it. So we're going to visit this page, and it has the patches that are, as it says here, that are assigned to me and in some sort of state that requires me to, to do something about that patch. Now, Leon can then look at that and go, hey, that's good, or it doesn't make sense. I think there was a comment on that patch there. Is that, is that any good? Or? A typo, OK, yeah. And we can uh, we can view it in this. Uh... Anyway, I won't review patches right now. That's not the point of this talk. Cool. And so that is delegates. In essence, um, as a maintainer, I can I can delegate review of patches um, usually to people or sub maintainers of my project. We actually use this quite a lot in the um, in the the, the main, I guess, sort of uh, the reason for patchwork is the Linux PPC project, um, which is Linux architecture or the PowerPC architecture port of the kernel. Um, what the, the way that group is structured is we have uh, one maintainer, um, currently Ben Herringman, who sort of does the, the generic PowerPC work, and he has some other guys that look after sort of board specific stuff. So one guy knows certain things about a class of machines, another guy knows a certain things about PCI on, on PowerPC. So he will, Ben will then look through the patchwork list and delegate patches to, to whoever knows best about that area. And that allows the review, the people who do the review on their area to do the best job they can rather than having to sort of encompass the whole thing or hand off manually by saying, hey guys, can you review this? And if that, that get lost, gets lost somewhere, then we're kind of back at our bad state of not knowing what's happening with patches. Now, we all sort of work in, in different ways, I think, is, is one of the, the primary lessons from open source, is not everyone likes to use a website. Um, so we have uh, PW Client, which is actually a, a, a command line based way of interaction, interacting with, with patchwork. Now, can everyone read that text there? We're going to make it a bit bigger. Does anyone want, to, want me to make it a bit bigger? Yep, nope, you do? Cool. I don't uh, know how I can do that, but. It's, uh, how's that? Cool. Okay, so I'm in my project here, um, and I've, I've configured 
this PW client program to look at that particular project in Patchwork. Now, using that one, uh, that command, PW client list, that'll list all the Patchwork patches that Patchwork knows about. It actually goes and does an HTTP request to the Patchwork server. I can be on any machine in the world and do that, um, that command. It'll grab the patches that are, that are in Patchwork for this project, show them to you on screen. Now, I want to filter by state here um, and just show me the, the new patches. So this way I can just look at the, uh, the patches that are in the new state in the Patchwork GUI, show them on the terminal here. Now, uh, let's um, use PW Client to view a patch. See on the left hand side here we have two IDs. That's the ID, just an incrementing number um, of that patch in Patchwork. So if I PW Client view an ID, that'll let me view the actual patch and the comments that are for that patch in Patchwork. So what this lets me do is, um, again, uh, using that PW Client command, I can pipe that patch straight into Git AM, which has made it apply to my the history of my project. Now this way, I haven't interacted with the uh, the GUI, the web GUI at all. Um, I've just been using the, the command line, which allows me to to grab patches out of Patchwork in their managed state and apply them to my repo as um, as just as the patches. Um, and now, because I'm the maintainer of Patchwork. I can also use PW client to um, update patches. So what I'll do is I'll take the client um, because I've uh, because I've accepted that patch. I've imported it into my revision control system. I can update the state. And then back on the um, I'll log in as me again. I can see that that patch has now disappeared from the list because I've, it's no longer in the new state um, and it's not something I need to work on. So using that PW client program, uh, I've been able to get patches from, uh, from Patchwork. Uh, there's an query what's in it. Update the patches just from the command line without having to go to the web GUI and find the corresponding patch and that sort of thing. And also make Patchwork uh, scriptable. One of the one of the big features that, um, oh, I guess one of the, the more quirky features, sorry, that uh, the PW client gives us is these patch hashes. Now, if I have a patch that I got from somewhere, um, I, I may not know which ID it is, so I can't update it. Um, I also may not know if it's in Patchwork at all. Uh, I don't know if what address to go to from that patch. So I, a while ago, we introduced the co this concept of patch hashes. Now, a hash is actually, it's a, I think it's an MD5 of the patch, minus some bits of the patch itself. So we take out the line numbers, because they will probably change over the lifetime of a patch. And we take out um, the offsets, things that, that will change in the patch, but not the actual content of the patch itself. So we take out that, hash it all up, and that gives us a number. And I have this little program called PW Parser. Um, if you have minus minus hash, and the patch on standard in, it'll create a hash view of that patch. And then using PW client, rather than giving it an ID to update, you can give it a hash. And then PW client will then look up, patch with the hash in the database, and do whatever update you wanted to do on it. So with this last patch here, um, through some other method, Leon has told me that this patch is cool. Um, actually, what I'll do, I won't use the patchwork um, command line at all. Just Remember that there is one patch in Patchwork at the moment, and I haven't touched that yet. So here's the patch that came from um, from Mikey. I will just save that into my project directory. Now I can do uh, now that that hash there allows me to, um, to find that patch in Patchwork, update the patch if necessary when I've accepted it, and that sort of thing. Um, now, one of the really cool things with that is now I don't need to know where a patch came from to update it. So what I've done is written a little git commit hook called post-apply patch. 
Now that does pretty much was shown on that, that previous slide. And in answer to your, your question earlier, this is, this is what we can do. So I'll just um, make that executable, as you do with um, these git hooks. Now if I then accept that patch, just like git am did before, um, accepts or imports that patch and its, and its comment into the git history, now we have that patch applied to our project. Now if we go to patchwork and refresh, we can see that that patch has now gone from our list because it has now been accepted. Now using that little script, patch hashes, we can now interact with patchwork without having to do any extra work at all. The maintainer can do exactly what they were doing before, as in just save the mail somewhere, git am it, and patchwork is now updated knowing where everything is. So that's kind of cool, I think. We, we can make patchwork yeah, do our work for us and not have to actually interact with the web GUI if we don't want to. So that's sort of a, a minimal impact view of, of getting patchwork into a, into a project, into a, the processes for, project, for a project. Now there's some other things that kind of don't really fit into a demo. Um, we have a, a little a mail header that Patchwork understands on incoming patches. Um, if you put this header in a patch, Patchwork will not parse anything from that mail and just forget about it um, on, the, on the input side. So I use this um, particularly, if I'm maintaining a project, I've accepted a bunch of patches and then I want to send those, pat like I've got them queued for the next, next version of the kernel. I want to send those patches out to the list to say, hey, this is what I'm putting in. Um, they're not really, I'm not really asking anyone to merge those patches. I'm just showing them to the, the guys on the list saying, what do, you, what do you think of these? Are they all cool? Um, if, there's aren't, if there aren't any comments, generally I'll push that whole setup to, to whoever's my upstream. Now when I send up those, those um, that sort of just, hey, how's it going? This is what I'm, I'm planning to merge pat, uh, patch set. I don't want Patchwork to, to re-import those ones because they're not things that I have to work on. I've already worked on those. I'm just sending them out for information. So if I put this, uh, this header on the mail for the, that patch set, uh, Patchwork will just ignore them, which is exactly what I want. Another little trick um, is this piece of script here. Um, given two Git revisions, uh, it will get all the patches, all the char1 patches from that list. Um, generate hashes of those, get, generate patchwork hashes of those patches and update them to say they're all accepted and which commit they're accepted in. So this allows me to catch up the patchwork list to the corresponding git list. So if I've already, if I've uh, imported a bunch of patches, I haven't updated patchwork, this little script here will allow me to update patchwork and to say that all those patches are accepted. They're accepted because they're in my git repo, so they're, they're probably probably good. Uh, just a, a few minutes on, on patchwork development. Um, some of the, I guess, before I go into this, some of the goals of patchwork. Um, uh, mainly, we want to keep it fairly uh, version control system independent. Um, we want to be able to use Git. Most of the patchwork development is done with Git in mind, but there's nothing there that actually excludes you from using anything else. Um, uh, if, if your patch program can take an inbox, then it's probably got everything it needs to, to interact with patchwork automatically. And if it has hooks, does be that has hooks? Do that. Okay, so we could we could do that same sort of integration with uh, with BZR if necessary. Other things we don't want to start introducing patchwork specific bits of info into the change log itself. We don't want to start committing little tags, little headers, all that sort of thing into into the actual Git history because the Git history is really the pristine, the kind of the cathedral part of our, our project. We don't want to start messing that up with things that are specific to one particular product. Also, we don't want to start having to get people using um, using Patchwork for their workflow. Someone's workflow is very personal to them, and they may or may not want to use Patchwork. Um, we don't want to enforce that for, on a project-wide basis. That said, some things that um, I'd like to work on in the future are uh, PW client improvements. As you can see before, it's a bit it's a bit um, awkward at the moment. Uh, PW client was actually included in the previous version of, of Patchwork, which was written in Perl. Uh, Patchwork is now written in Python. Um, and the new new Python one wasn't didn't have a PW client in it. Someone contributed a PW client, which is fantastic. Uh, I just think we need to sort of work on that a bit um, and get it as a sort of a first class citizen of how you use Patchwork. At the moment, it's kind of something off to the sidelines, which is 
which is okay, but it's not fantastic. Another thing I'd like to do is be able to reply via the web. At the moment, um, the only way you get stuff into patchwork, um, like patches, for example, and comments, is through the mailing list. And that was done by a, a design decision in, uh, in, the, um, in the original stages of patchwork, because I didn't want to start fragmenting the, the community into the group that uses patchwork and possibly interacts in forums sort of style and the group that uses the, the mailing list. So that, that sort of complicates the reply via web feature a little bit because if you reply to a patch, we want that, the mailing list to also just see that reply. And as, a, as, I guess, an open source hacker, you probably also want to keep a copy of that in your sent folder. So if I can somehow munge mailers into composing a mail in your native environment, we'll kind of work this one out. There's been some suggestions about how to do that at the moment, but the one that was the one that's up at the moment is a bit, uh, a bit clunky, but I'm sure we can work something out. Another thing, and this is actually, uh, someone asked for it again at LCA this year, um, is some way to, to relate patches to each other. Um, as we saw before, Mikey sent me a whole series of four patches. If there's some way I could say that automatically becomes a bundle, or it, all the patches in that are al already kind of related in somehow, and I can work on that set as a unit without manually having to create a bundle, that'd be pretty cool. And some sample support scripts. That, that Git one that I showed you earlier, that's one of the my little sort of collection of patchwork scripts that I have. It'd be good to put them online somewhere and document them and, and so everyone can share them. And I'm sure, um, well, I know that some of the PowerPC guys have written their own little bits of, of interaction with patchwork and, and it'd be good to share that sort of stuff. Uh, coming to the end of the talk, this is, uh, if you need to go, this is the URL for patchwork um, and the mailing list. Ironically, there is not a patchwork patchwork. Uh, I don't have that many contributors yet, so I don't really need one. But uh, if you guys want to start patching, I'm sure I'll get one. And importantly, thank you very much. Any questions? Nope. Any feature requests? That's supposed to be the main thing that happens. Uh, I work in patchwork. Can you do this for me? Awesome. That was good. Thank you very much, guys. And girls. Thank you, Jeremy. That was really good. Even I actually understood some of it, so cool. that's always fantastic. Um, up next, we've got a talk on virtual network. Sorry, not virtual. Yes, virtual network switching across hypervi hypervisors, um, which should be quite interesting. Virtualization is becoming quite way popular and sort of what well, I think um, ways to do things as well. Um, otherwise, there's a break until 11.30. <laughs>